Do you ever wonder what sets apart those who step confidently into the spotlight from those who shy away? The difference between one who walks up to that person in the coffee shop and fires up a conversation? Or how about the person that just seems to own a room? Is it sheer talent? Is it good fortune? Is it relentless hard work? Is it some intangible? Or is it something more? The lack of confidence is costing more than you think in terms of missed opportunities, missing out on exciting parts of life, the zest, the vibrancy, the connections, the things that get a lot of folks fired up and get them up in the morning. So how do we go about increasing it just that 1% each day? We'll get into three practical ways you can build self-confidence, including a bonus one, which is actually the easiest to do. Hi there. I'm Daryl Black, and today we're diving deep into the superpower we all possess but can often overlook, self-confidence. Yes, you heard it right, it is a superpower. Imagine facing every challenge with a belief so strong in your abilities that failure becomes just another challenge. It just becomes a step towards your success. I remember uh, it was 2000, and it was a call for a tornado that ripped through a uh, campground, well, a number of areas, but in particular a campground in the central part of the province where I'm from. And uh, they were expecting as many as 99 to uh, 150 people, I believe, deceased, uh, missing, presumed deceased. So we got the call, search and rescue, responded down there. And I remember uh, getting there, receiving a briefing, but I wasn't able to see the, the entire area. Like it was, uh, we were up on a hill where the command post was and all of those things where the briefing was. So I wasn't able to actually see down, down the hill. I could look across the lake and I could see very clearly where the tornado had gone and, and uh, very, very interesting. The, the trees were, were straight, straight, straight and then cut right through them and a very clear swath was where the tornado went. But that was the only indication at that point of the size and the, the width and, and significance of the tornado. I hadn't actually seen the damage yet. When I was going to brief the team, I remember thinking, well, you know, I should probably go check it out at least. So I walked to the edge of the of the hill and looking down is if you can just picture uh, just mass destruction. There were trailers all over the place. There were there were vehicles overturned and everything you've seen on the news that was right there in front of me, a very clear swath through. And I remember just taking a moment and being immediately overwhelmed for sure. And this is a feeling I've felt numerous times when I respond to uh, disasters and emergencies, as well as things like presenting a multi-million dollar budget or an update to 75 interested parties for a big operation or a big project I'm involved with. The, the initial kind of uh, sense of overwhelm, it's real and it's tangible and it's uh, present no matter if it's facing that tornado or, or it's facing the, the CEO uh, in the boardroom, for example. But then... To get through that, one of the things I do is I take a deep breath and I practice a, a quick de-stressing process. And I think to myself, it's okay, you've got this, you've got this. And the reason I say that, and I say it with confidence, is because I do have that. I have a huge amount of confidence in myself. I have a huge amount of confidence in the team that I'm responding with, the teams that are responding around. Uh, I've, done something similar, maybe not exactly, at least at that point. And so it's all of that, those things that contribute to that. It's okay. I've got this. So how did I get there? Here's the reality. Confidence or specifically self-confidence is a foundational trait that affects virtually every aspect of our lives. And that's great because you can actually build self-confidence and it's easier than you think. And this came up very recently, as, as recently as last week, once again, in a program that I was facilitating. And we talked a lot about confidence. We talked a lot about crisis leadership in this, again, this context. We talked a lot about team building and, and all of the things that, that go into building a team, that uh, high levels of trust and all of those things. And it was great because towards the end of this five-day program, this one group, uh, two out of three actually, intentionally said, you know, let's fulfill roles or do jobs that we actually have never done before. And let's see what happens. And it was super interesting. One, it was indicative of a good learning environment and a safe space that they had created amongst themselves as a team, as well as, uh, as from a facilitation perspective. So that was awesome. 
But it was really cool because the head person, the, the one who was deemed to lead this particular segment, he was really apprehensive. His face went red and, and his eyes started darting back and forth. And it was clear that he was uncomfortable. And that's when the team came together and said, it's okay. We're all doing new roles. And you know what? We're here to help you. And so this particular segment occurs. There's a bunch of you know chaos and all sorts of things that, that occurred. And this team, by all accounts, nailed it. And this leader nailed it. And afterwards, he was grinning ear to ear. And what had happened during that two-hour segment was he went from a, a, a spot of complete disbelief and, and really apprehension and, and outright fear. Frankly, there's so much that goes into it, you know, fear of failure, uh, not looking uh, foolish uh, in front of your peers, all sorts of things like that, and, and all of the negative self-talk, which we'll talk about. All of that went into his initial apprehension, but that went away. Afterwards, big smile, high fives, all of the things. So even in that two-hour segment, that individual and, and many others went from fearful, disbelief, I can't do this, to, yeah, I absolutely can. So let's talk about what that transition, that essential transformation looks like, because it's actually not by accident. And those are the principles that we'll talk about in this episode that you can actually employ yourself. Self-confidence. It isn't just about feeling good in your skin. It's actually the trust in your capability to act and achieve desired outcomes, whether it's clinching that high stakes deal at work or acing public speaking, which is right up there with the fear of death, or even mastering a new recipe at home. It's what empowers you to take action, face new challenges, and bounce back stronger from perceived setbacks. Yeah, it is that important. But here's the problem. In today's fast-paced world, self-doubt is a silent saboteur Holds back ambitious professionals, maybe like you, back from your full potential. It whispers words of uncertainty during decisive moments like, you can't do this. You're not right for this. You've never done this before. All sorts of things. And it lurks in the shadows of every big decision and challenging task that maybe you're confronted with. But that's okay. We're going to kick it to the curb right away. Remember, it's about improving 1% each day. Just 1%. But before we dive too far into it, let's... let's get a term of reference. Let's figure out some, some definitions, shall we? So self-confidence itself, it actually comes from the Latin term, like most language. It's a combination of a noun and a verb, but ultimately it comes down to completely to trust. Okay, so completely to trust. It's a, it's a noun, it's a verb. And when you combine that with oneself, it means completely to trust oneself. In other words, that is really what we're talking about with self-confidence. We have complete trust in ourselves. There is an analogy around the bird doesn't sit on a branch that's fragile or a thin branch because it has faith in the branch. It actually sits on it confidently and comfortably because it has confidence in its ability to fly and its own wings. And I think that is a, such a great analogy and a frame for us when we talk about self-confidence. It's not about that thin branch. It's, it's not about how stable it is, but no matter what happens, that branch breaks or whatever, it's okay. We're going to be okay. So a leader with high self-confidence might approach a high stakes negotiation with a key client, feeling prepared and assured in their ability to secure a favorable deal and being able to roll with the punches and, and answer any questions, come up with any objections and speak confidently during any presentation that may come up with because they have the knowledge. Maybe they don't, but they certainly have a lot of self-confidence. And from there, that energy comes through. Now, let's be clear, there is a difference in confidence and arrogance, which we'll get into here shortly. But essentially, it's really about that individual in a professional environment having confidence in their own abilities and equally importantly, that of their team. At home, maybe self-confidence looks like taking on a new hobby or, or learning a new skill, such as cooking a complex dish or learning the piano or some sort of do-it-yourself home improvement project. Maybe you're initially unfamiliar with it, but a person with self-confidence would trust in their ability to learn and, and improve through effort and practice and, and viewing every little 
mistake, quote unquote mistake, as an opportunity to learn and be better and viewing it with curiosity. And that will allow you to tackle projects that you haven't done before. So let's talk about some key definitions, things that I've grappled with over the years. We talked about self-confidence. That is essentially a belief or trust in oneself, a trust in yourself that no matter what, you will be able to handle whatever comes. Another term, and I used it a little bit earlier, is arrogance. What is arrogance? And it's something that, man, oh man, is so interesting to me. It's really about an inflated sense of one's importance, their abilities, or worth, and it's often accompanied by a dismissive attitude towards others. So I see arrogance as really how you how you interact with other people that you are better than, and in a lot of cases, you'll tell them that. Whereas the self-confidence is often combined with uh, humility, being humble. Arrogance is really more boisterous. It's more overt. The problem is that it can lead to conflicts and it really means a sense of sup superiority or, or you know, being better than. And man, oh man, that just rubs me the wrong way. And I think it rubs a lot of people. Arrogance to me is, is loud, right? It's loud. Self-confidence is quiet. That's really how I wrap it uh, in, my, in my brain boisterous, just out, all of the things. And hey, you know what? I've done this. And by the way, I'll tell you I've done that. The problem is it's not necessarily based on actual abilities or achievements and actually can be a facade for something a little bit deeper, a lot of insecurities, but don't tell them that because that will make them very uncomfortable. So that's arrogance. What about self-esteem? That often accompanies and, and is, is uh, in, uh, in the conversation around confidence and arrogance. So self-esteem, what is that? Essentially, it's the overall sense of value or worth that you assign to yourself. It's, it's much more global or, or grand than self-confidence itself. One of the key features of self-esteem, it's deeply ingrained and uh, it can be very, very stable. It's really just a fundamental foundational element of who we are. So self-esteem is deeply ingrained and can be way more stable than self-confidence. It's something that really goes down to the root of our personalities and really our sense of self-worth and this whole notion of are we enough. That's self-esteem. Self-confidence can fluctuate, but generally speaking, your self-esteem really won't. If you have a strong self-esteem or, or a sense of, of self-worth, that is for the most part, stays relatively stable. Sure, it takes a beating once in a while, but that's okay. Uh, for the most part, it's pretty hard to beat. It in influences overall life satisfaction, mental health, really, and it can really contribute to positive outcomes. Conversely, low self-esteem, man, oh man, uh, it can be directly related to some negative outcomes. The good news is it can be enhanced through a lot of positive reinforcement, achievements, and constructive feedback, and things that we'll talk about but self-esteem I see very much as foundational. It's it's really part of our value set. We have arrogance, which is, I envision it loud, boisterous, really causes conflict. Like it's a very forceful thing. And self-confidence is often just that quiet self-belief that that humility is, is part of that self-confidence. So those are the three, generally speaking, the three buckets that are in the conversation around self-confidence. So it was important for us to dive into what those meant. Now that we know the differences between being self-confident and arrogant and self-esteem, and we know that self-confidence is really, really important, there are three strategies and a bonus one here. And strategy number one to building self-confidence is leverage your past successes and the success of others. So that was what I was doing in the tornado example. That's what I do when I'm going to present to a CEO. That's what I'm doing when I'm speaking to thousands of people. I've done it before. And again, maybe it's not directly related, but I have done hard things. We can do hard things. And so reflecting on all of that, and let's face it, if you want to be perfectly right to brass tacks, you've survived everything life has thrown at you to this point. You've gone through it. Maybe you're like a ship and you've lost your sails a bit and you got some holes in the hull. I totally get it. But you have survived. You've got through some pretty shitty circumstances, I would suspect, in, in your life. So you have done hard things already and you can continue to do hard things. So that's leveraging your past successes, but also the success of others. So something that often helps is, well, they've done that. Like, they've done it. Why can't I? So maybe it's somebody jumping off of the three meter high um, diving platform, nine meters. 
whatever that looks like. And you see people doing it all the time. Now, that's not to say automatically, boom, you're going to be able to do it. But these are some of the things that you can be thinking about is leverage your past successes and the success of others. And what if you don't have a track record in this? Well, you can set and achieve small goals. So for instance, at work, break down larger objectives into smaller manageable tasks that can be achieved more easily. Instead of trying to boil the ocean, it's an approach that not only makes daunting tasks more manageable, but also provides a lot of moments of achievement. And that boosts your self-confidence and there's a dopamine hit and things like that. But the key is that you need to recognize those achievements. Now, you don't need to have an office party every time you sent that difficult email by any stretch, but you know what? Maybe a little, hmm, yeah, I was a little reluctant to send that, you know, to really stand my ground or create some boundaries or give that update, but I did. Yeah, awesome. There you go. So that is part of the, the setting and achieve small goals if you don't have this big track record. So that's an example for work, but what about at home? Well, you can apply the same principle at home. So let's say you wanna renovate your home, okay? I, I renovated a 1915 home, loved it, knew nothing, nothing about home construction, but oh my goodness, I learned. And thank you, YouTube University and the internet. Oh my goodness. So maybe start with a small room or even just one aspect of a room. Maybe it's painting, maybe it's rearranging some furniture, maybe it's changing some baseboards. Completing these smaller tasks successfully can really boost your self-confidence and you just start to build that track record. Key is that you continue to pat yourself on the back. Again, we're not gonna go on, on the internet and say, hey, by the way, I painted a wall. You don't have to, but certainly recognize that if that's not something you're comfortable doing, yeah, you did it. And maybe it's not a professional job, that's okay. The second strategy for building self-confidence is recognizing that language really, really matters. Like it really matters. So reduce your negative self-talk. Equally, actually it's more important that with the reducing negative self-talk, you increase positive self-talk. I alluded to it a bit earlier in, in our previous strategy. So what happens when you're, when you're using negative self-talk, like, oh man, you idiot, like I'm so dumb, or of course it didn't work out, whatever that is. And by the way, those are examples I've used in my own life. Right, so yeah, welcome to the club, you're not unusual. So the problem with negative self-talk is it really undermines self-confidence and it just reinforces the doubts and the fears and, and really undermines your belief, your own trust in yourself. It creates a self-fulfilling prophecy, honestly. You believe it, you say it, yeah, guess what? It's going to happen. If you think you are dumb, you will be dumb. I apologize, that is the reality and it just really warps how you view things that didn't work out really well. You see it as failure and reinforcing this belief that you're not good enough versus treating a quote unquote failure as, hey, you know what? I learned that. That's awesome. All right. I know how not to do it. Man, that didn't work out so well. So that's one of the impacts of, of negative self-talk. It just also increases stress and anxiety. And as if we don't have enough of that in this world, man, oh man, we're going to be doing lots of other uh, episodes on stress and anxiety and reframing and all those other things. But man, if you're constantly criticizing yourself or expecting the worst, it can just lead to heightened stress and anxiety before you even do the thing, let alone afterwards. Keep that in mind. And generally speaking, negative self-talk, it really limits personal growth. It, it just, it keeps you in your comfort zone. It prevents you from talking to that person at the coffee shop. It prevents you from applying for that new job. It prevents you from giving the energy out into the world that you've got this, you're confident, you're gonna be able to handle it. You're going to be okay. You, you, you will actually physically shrink. And again, we'll get into that in a lot more detail, but your energy shrinks, your body shrinks, your shoulders drop, all of those things. And it's tangible. You may not recognize it, Maybe you're just so used to it. That is just ops normal for you. But I promise you, others can pick that up. And I have, I have some very good examples of that that I'll share in other episodes around this diminutive shrinking of energy. It's a thing. And it just is such a limiting factor in your personal growth and just keeps you stuck. Negative self-talk, man, ain't got no time for that. So then increasing positive self-talk. Now, Ah, positive affirmations. You know, I think it's Stuart Smalley. I'm good enough. I'm smart enough. And gosh darn it, people like me. The SNL clip 
which is hilarious. I'm not saying you're going to be doing affirmations that, uh, that are like totally unrealistic. There's a lot of science around affirmations and what works and what doesn't, but essentially making sure that you're taking the opportunity to say that you can do it. You do have it. You've done hard things before. Expressing gratitude is such, such a powerful thing as well. Being grateful for the team that's helping you. Being grateful for the strength and the courage and the growth mindset that is required to do the hard things that, again, you've already done. Those are the counteractions to some of the negative self-talk as well. Strategy number three to building self-confidence, reframe and embrace the attempt as the learning opportunity. The power of yet. There's um, a saying that I heard, you know, and, and I ran, I started, I've started running years ago and uh, I was like, I literally could not run a minute without stopping. Like no word of a lie there. So I started doing one minute running, one minute walking, one minute, so on and so forth. And I eventually got to the point where I uh, could run a 10K race. And I remember reflecting when I walked up to that finish or walked up to that start line. So you know what? I actually don't give a shit about the race. This, this right here, this is the victory. This is what right looks like. It's not finishing. It's actually getting to here from where I was before. And it was the attempt. It was getting to the point where I was going to try for this thing. And I did. That was so powerful. And that happened years ago, years ago. And I still remember it clear as day because I remember looking at the line. I get goosebumps now thinking, you know what? F it. This, this is victory right here. And so you want to cultivate a, a culture where failure, it's not seen as a setback, but as a stepping stone. So one minute walking, one minute running. Yeah. Others would see that as like, are you kidding me? No, screw that noise. That was a victory because you know what was the victory? Well, I went for two minutes running, one minute walking, and then three minutes running, one minute walking, and so on and so forth. That's that growth mindset. And it's just like, man, you know, that's good. That's good. I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm moving forward. And I've got this. I can do this. I can do hard things. And it's that growth mindset that is so critical to self-confidence where I'm not there dot, dot, dot yet. And every time you quote unquote fail, it's an opportunity to analyze your approach and improve any strategies that you're employing. I think Edison said he failed a thousand times. You know, every time he, he, every time something didn't work, it was just one more example of what would work, you know, something like that. I'm butchering that completely, but it's so important to embrace the attempt and that growth mindset when you're talking about self-confidence. So at work, when a project doesn't yield the expected results, instead of focusing on the failure, right? Like, oh man, where did we, where do we screw up? Lead a team discussion to analyze what went wrong for sure, but what was learned and how this new knowledge can be applied to future projects. So you're constantly iterating. Again, it's not about the home run. It's about that 1% improvement in your daily life and in your projects at work, whatever that looks like. Because guess what? Even if the outcome wasn't desirable, there were a lot of things that you did right. Don't just focus on the things you did wrong. Reinforce the things you did right and minimize the things you do wrong and continue to iterate. That's a good work example. What about at home? Well, learning to play the piano, for example. I'm just going to be starting on that. I'll tell you, I literally, literally have no idea how to play the piano. I've never, I took a music class in junior high. I don't remember a thing from it. And you know what? I'm excited. I'm excited to be learning the piano. There's some cognitive brain health benefits around that, but I realized that I don't have a clue, but that's okay. Maybe I'm going to start with chopsticks, I think. Is that the... Dude, I don't even know that, actually. Oh, my gosh. That's how far gone I am, but that's okay. I'm excited for it. So I'm going to start from scratch. I'm going to hire a teacher, and I'm going to learn. And I'm going to start figuring out what the white keys do and the black keys do. And I am excited for that because I am going to suck badly early, but that's okay. <laughs> I can do hard things. I can learn how to play the piano. No problem at all. Wow. Well, shouldn't say no problem at all. No problem in starting it for sure. There's going to be some challenges, but just apply that to your own life on the personal front. I promised a bonus one. 
and that is getting physical. And there's two aspects to this. One is your state. Your, your physical state really has a lot to do with your confidence. The old way of thinking was your brain, you know, managed, told your body what to do. And it was kind of top down, both literally and figuratively, frankly. But the science has been resoundingly clear that it's actually a two-way street. It's an interaction. And you can actually change your neurology, your, your, your brain chemistry, by your physical body. So I talked about earlier about, you know, if, if you're limiting, if you don't have the self-confidence and maybe low self-esteem, you shrink energetically, you're smaller, your shoulders drop, all of those things. It's true. And so what is the opposite of that is, is getting stronger as if like a, a, a string is at the top of your head and it's pulling up, right? Pull your, your shoulders back, put your torso up a little bit. Now we're not talking like uh, King Kong beating your chest kind of stuff. That's probably arrogance, but it's really important to stand up. That also helps with your breathing and all of those other things. But just think about that. Next time you're going to be walking through the threshold of a door for a meeting, change your state. It makes a difference. Now, also with the physical part is, is, is the, the um, physical wellness that comes with working out or exercising. That can be something like steps, 5,000 steps a day, 8,000 steps a day. 10,000 steps a day, maybe 15,000 steps a day. We're not talking about going to, to, to your local gym and, and working out and all of that necessarily. Although resistance training, hugely beneficial. But maybe it is starting with getting your 5,000 steps. And that's building on your success, right? It's building the success that you can do hard things. I did 5,000. Well, now I can do 8,000. Now I can do 10,000. And then maybe you do start to exercise. Maybe you stu still, or you, maybe you do start to eat better. You start to feel better about yourself. You start to have a locus of control back. That will boost your self-confidence as well. So this physical part is really two aspects and, and that's the bonus where it's that state, but it's also the exercising or, or just improving your fitness, improving your diet a little bit, 1% each day. That's what we're talking about. So let's summarize the three strategies. Well, four, because there was a, a bonus there, if you remember. Strategy one, leverage your past successes and the success of others. Maybe that's setting and achieving small goals. Maybe that's reminding yourself that you've done hard things in the past and maybe it's not directly related to this, but gosh darn it, you're, you're able to do this. You've done it before. You've done hard things before. That's strategy one. Strategy two, remember that language matters. So we want to really reduce that negative self-talk, the you're dumb, you're not gonna do this. Of course it didn't work out and replace it with more positive self-talk. Things like, you have done hard things, you've got this. Expressing gratitude for the opportunity and for those around you. That's the second strategy. The third strategy is that reframe and embracing the attempt. It's a learn that the third strategy is reframe and embrace the attempt as the learning opportunity, the power of yet, essentially a growth mindset. That failure, it's actually truly an opportunity to do things better the next time. And the bonus strategy is around getting physical. That's changing your state, right? Chest up, not out by any stretch. Maybe it's boosting your sternum an inch or two or a few centimeters if you're in the rest of the world. I digress. Maybe it's putting your shoulders back. It's about having that string tied to the top of your head and lifting you up. It's about doing some steps each day. So improving your physical wellness and your physical health. It's about starting to eat better. That is what right looks like when we're building self-confidence, all of those things. But I want you to remember that to get to 1%, you may nail it most days, but you won't nail it every day. And for those days that maybe you don't, maybe you fall a little bit shorter, outright fall backwards a bit, that's okay. Because throughout this entire journey of self-improvement, getting 1% better each day in whatever you decide to do, in this case, it's self-confidence, give yourself some grace. You're doing the best you can, and that's all you can ask of yourself, and honestly, what you can ask of others. So remember, 
Building self-confidence, it's a process. It's about getting better just 1% each day, not a one-time achievement. Thanks for your time. I sincerely appreciate it.